Quiet, please. Quiet, please. The American Broadcasting Company presents Quiet, Please, which is written and directed by Willis Cooper and which features Ernest Chappell. Quiet, Please, for tonight is called Tango Foot. Well, you ever smell a plumbing shop? And I tell you what you smell. The thing I remember best of all... The smell of the fly paper. My heavens, there seemed to be fly paper every place. I don't know, maybe in the old days there was more of it or there was more flies or something. Then like every place you went, you run into fly paper. Remember that smell? Like varnish with sugar in it? Like taffy that got spoiled? Kind of a fascinating smell in a sicky way. Think about it and you kind of think... Yeah, no wonder the flies liked the smell and went for it. Well, sure flies can smell. They got smells that'll make a bloodhound jealous if he knows it. And the flies got lots of things. Yeah, you got a jillion eyes, six fancy legs, wings, and a trunk like an elephant. Only a little there, the boskis they call it. Huh? Yeah, not the flies. They can't talk. Boy, how do you break good? I know a lot about flies. I'll tell you about it. Ah, boy, was it hot. I and Herbie, we was threading three-quarter-inch black iron pipe. And I wonder how long flies live. Nah, I don't know. Too long. I wonder what flies think about. Eating? That's what I'm thinking about. Thinking about flies. Are you crazy about flies today? Well, I just got thinking. This guy had a pet fly. <laughs> You're crazy. This would be a great big... Big as a bag. Yeah, that big fly should be something. Should be a swell pet, though. If you could tame him. Oh, I'd tame him all right. Maybe the fly tamer. Be as big and strong as a bull. I have to put a big chain on him. He'd fly away with you. Maybe I could train him to take me places. Fly, you know. Yeah, you should think him of an educated fly. Fly paper catches and good old tanglefoot boy. I have to have an awful big piece of tanglefoot to catch this old boy. Ain't got much tanglefoot in the world. Ain't no fly like that in the world either. <laughs> oh, boy, if there was. I know what you'd feed a fly that big. Have to feed them people, I guess. Come on, let's go. I remember it was pretty near three, four months later. It was just getting kind of the first days of fall, and people were starting to burn dry leaves along the curbstone. Herbie and me was fixing a hot water heater for Frank and Edith Gibbons, the telegraph operator. Live out there where Washington runs into Court Street. Ain't been any flies for three weeks. I know where there's a fly. Huh? I know where there's a fly. Well, why don't you swat them? Well, two reasons. First, I uh, kind of like this fly. Like him? Raised him from a pup. Herbie. Hmm? Raised a fly from a pup? Second thing is, you want to swat this fly, you better have a baseball bat. What? This here fly is eight inches long. How big? Maybe nine. How'd you get him so big, Herbie? Huh? Secret buck. And so? I bet if he'd lay an egg, the pup would be bigger than he was. Fly egg. Bigger than a hen's egg it'd be. Bigger than maybe a turkey egg. Maybe he's dead. Yeah. That great big fly of yours. Yeah. On the level now. 
Is there a great big fly? Huh? Couldn't you just be... Well, I just thought about it all of a sudden. I've never seen this here fly. I mean, you think I'm just fooling? I was wondering. I was just making it up. Was you? No. I wasn't making it up. I just wondered. Listen, Buck. I never made that up. I wish I'd never started making flies grow big. I'd have stopped when I got one this big. I wish... I don't know whether to believe you or not. Listen, Buck, when I think what that there fly... You remember way back last summer when we first talked about it? You said, what would you feed a great big fly? Yeah. Remember what you said? What? You said people. People, you said. That's what you'd feed them. Oh. Oh, yeah. Listen, Buck, he already had a dog that we know about. What if he... If he ain't dead by now and all is cold, he must be... Must be what? Hungry. Third of December, 1915. Yeah, seven, six, five, four, three, the third, the night Herbie and me talked like I told you. I remember because on the seventh, the Boy Scouts had a movie at the Capitol Theater. It used to be the Standard Theater. And there was a kid with a bugle blown at that front. That was the seventh. That was the night Bert Kincaid phoned me up from the shop and Mayor Watson came over from kind of next door and told me Bert was calling me. An hour later, Bert, uh, he said, you and Herbie Butterworth go right away to these people, these McKinneys or McKinneys or McKinneys, whichever it was, because their friend or something was wrong with it and they was hollering and they was freezing. And I should go right on over and Herbie would meet me there. He was already on the way with the rickets and the wagon and the tools. And the place was only two doors away from where Herbie lived, there by the Garfield School. And that's why he was there already, see? I never even bothered to knock on the door. I just went around to the cellar door with my Coleman lantern and I come on down and Herbie was there already sitting on the cellar steps so I just about fell over him. I'm not looking very happy. Say, so, yeah, I said, I thought there was freezing to death here in this house with a busted furnace that's not cold down here. It's warm, I said. I fixed it. Huh? I fixed the furnace. What you so crabby about? Shh. Huh? She's down here. Who? Louise, you know, the McKinley gal or whatever her name is. Where? <laughs> oh. And that's why I ain't welcome to his company. Three Shut days. up. Where is she? I went back there in the preserve closet. What for? Could have bring you a jar of apple butter. The old man makes elderberry wine. <laughs> got some bottles back there he bought from Ohio or Iowa or whatever it is. Three years old. And I sure like elderberry wine. I know it. What's she doing, making that wine? The old man probably hid it for herself. Why don't you yell at her? The folks will hear upstairs. Louise! Shut up. <laughs> hey, Louise, shut up, Buck. Come on, let's go help her, Nix. Louise, you want some help? Buck, the people will hear you. Hey, Louise. I thought maybe you needed some... Louise? Louise. Buck, what's that? Herbie. What's the matter, Buck? I could recognize her by her clothes. By her clothes, that's all. You never saw a person that met a fly. No, you never did. Herbie and I did. A big, not eight, nine inches long now, down in the hot, stuffy cellar. Two feet long. And fat and kind of loggy it was, dopey, like after you had a big dinner. And Louise, Herbie, he fainted, and I... Back there by the furnace pipes. I could see them eyes. And Jillian eyes. And that trunk like elephant. It kind of buzzed and wiggled its eyes at me and rubbed its face with its... its paws like a cat washing its face after dinner. And I tried to holler, but all I could hear was this buzzing, that's all. And then it kind of stumbled out from the pipes, and it jumped, and it came right past my face, and it, it flew kind of sagging, kind of out of the corner of my eye, I seen it. It flew right out into the furnace room, and the furnace door was open, and the fire... You don't want to hear anymore, huh? It was 
pleases me a little bit more. You'd come this far with me, so... And they put us both, Herbie and me, in jail. They said we murdered Louise, but nobody could murder anybody like that. And there wasn't any other evidence, so... See, the fly was dead. Disappeared, and there wasn't anything to go on. So they had to let us go. That's pretty near the whole story. Ain't it, Herbie? The egg? Oh, sure, I pretty near forgot about that egg. Bigger than a hen's egg. Big's a turkey egg. Back there in the dark behind the pipes. I didn't see it. Buck seen it. But I never told anybody about it. Did I, Herbie? Nobody but you. And when they left us out of jail, we we come back here looking for it, but it was gone. There was kind of a squenching back there, and we looked, and sure enough, larva. They call it in the books. You know. And we took it away with us. And sure enough, this one grew bigger than its father or its mother or whatever it was. And everyone since then has got a little bigger and a little hungrier. Is that so, Herbie? Yep. Hungry all the time. Never let him out to hunt. Wait. <laughs> Look at him. Ain't he a dinger? <laughs> First real live pet fly you ever seen. Here, Louise. We call him Louise. Look at them eyes. Jillions of them. <laughs> Look. He unrolls his truck. Ain't that cute? <laughs> nice, clean face. See the sharp bristles on his legs? Biggest fly in the world. Bigger than a collie. Bigger than a Shetland pony, I bet. And hungrier, too. Come on, Louise. Wake up. He's awake, Buck. Uh-huh. Okay, Herbie? Okay. Go on in. No, you I'm talking to. You, he says. Go on in. Go on in. Louise is hungry. That's <laughs> it. What's the matter? Can't move your feet? Sure. You stuck in something? stuff. Fly paper, we got a different name for it now. Yeah, no use trying to get loose. You're stuck for good. And Louise is hungry. Only heard a minute, that's all. Careful, Louise, honey. Don't get your feet stuck in the man paper. Thanks for watching till the end. If you liked what you saw, please consider clicking like on the video or sharing it. You can become a channel member by clicking the join link below. Then you can check our community page to find the links to 10 hours or more of secret, uncensored dogman stories too wild to be told on this channel. Your other option is to join our paid subscribers club at peterbernard.com. That's Peter's homemade club where he will personally email you the links as well as occasional secret club messages. You may also be included as an executive producer in a future episode. You have a scary experience you want to tell us about? You can email us at scarystoriesnyc at gmail.com or else call our Scary Stories voicemail hotline at 804 Less Scary. The machine cuts off every few minutes, so if you have a long story, please keep calling back and we'll piece it together later on. Good night and have a scary tomorrow.